to kick things off today, um, I'd like to invite our uh, board president, Diane Fritz, to the stage. Um, a little bit about my Diane. Uh, she has worn many hats from being a graduate student in geochemistry and hydrology to being a ski patroller. After falling in love with geospatial technologies, discovered via a hydrology modeling project, Diane moved more solidly into the world of mapping. She discovered OSM when she joined a map time group and has been spreading the word about OpenStreetMap to students and others ever since. Diane has enjoyed working as a geospatial data scientist at an academic library in Denver, Colorado, where she helped students and faculty bring a spatial aspect of analysis to their projects and research. This past week, she started a new position at the National Snow and Ice Data Center, congratulations, uh, where she'll be helping research around the world work with the data that helps us understand how changes in the cryosphere impact our planet. So go to nsidc.org to check it out. And there's even a polar bear on the home page. Um, Diane's happy to stay connected with her students by continuing to teach remote sensing at CU Denver. Uh, this will be her final year serving on the OSM board. Uh, and I wanna thank her for that service, um, but she looks forward to the months to come. So thank you to everyone for joining us this weekend. I hope you enjoy the event and we will get things started. Uh, Diane, the floor is yours. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, uh, OSM has been something I've been part of since about 2016, which was when I found it um, via the map time group that I joined. And that was right before the state of the map was in Boulder. And so it was very convenient for me to go to that conference because I live in Boulder, Colorado. Um, so I've been involved in the group since then, mostly as a disciple. I will call myself that because being in academia and sharing OSM with students and teachers and just trying to figure out how to get data to everybody um, has been part of my role. And I'm very looking forward to a lot of different projects that we have in the OpenStreetMap community, including the Open Historical Map to kind of continue that build of amazing data. So I'm going to start with a little presentation that I put together for this. And I just wanted to emphasize that my my view from being in the open street map role and and being serving as the president for the board for the open street map us local chapter has just given me a really really great view into what open street map is more about beyond just kind of mapping in my own little um corner on my laptop and just realizing how strongly it really is about community even um at all of the projects and everything that we do. So I want to talk about that, kind of my view from my um, chair. It's all about community and, and talk about different ways the community is put together. So being a board president has been um, a privilege and will continue to be this next year. I'm really excited to um, have another year to work with everyone in this position. Part of it is it's been so wonderful because the OpenStreetMap US team, so we are a local chapter of the OpenStreetMap Foundation, and we have an excellent executive director, Maggie, who just welcomed all of us to this virtual conference today, plus some um, employees that are that work with OSM US that just do great support for all of the projects that we have going on. We have inspired members and volunteers. So you, thank you for being here today. Um, if you're not a member of OSM US, but would like to be, please, do that, but also just keep volunteering and keep mapping that that passion is what gives the ground swell of data that we can use to do all of these things. And these things, I'm going to talk about them a little bit, but uh, Maggie has a presentation later today that she's going to go into more details 
about all of the projects that we have. But because we have such a great community, we can reach out and engage collaborators outside of that and really just make the impact of open street map data very strong. And I wanna to touch on that as well. Also, um, it is a privilege being part of this board because I have very smart and caring colleagues that are on this board. So this is us. Um, you can come say hi and learn more about the board at um, a later presentation today. So this is me, Diane. Um, Matthew, Adam, Priyanka, and Brian are all part of the board with me. And we meet monthly and just try to help steer the ship and um, help support Maggie and the team with things with outside perspectives, talking about funding sources, all of these kinds of challenges that we have to support all of these amazing community-driven projects that OpenStreetMap takes part in. So this is a um, slide that I kind of stole from some of our slide decks, but it, it just has a really good overview on a lot of what OpenStreetMap US does and what I, as a board president, have just been trying to keep track of and make sure I understand how all of these things integrate and how we can help. So my personal um, involvement in OpenStreetMap has been very focused in the um, trail stewardship projects. So the responsible recreation piece of some of the work that we've been doing. I will be talking more about that um, in a presentation later today. It's kind of a bonus special that's going to be added to the schedule. Uh, mapping for impact is collaborating with partners that are just community partners outside of OpenStreetMap that need to do things with data. And one that I'm just going to highlight today is um, this rising tide effect, but there are a lot of different opportunities there. Teach OSM is another one that um, I have been involved with just because of my lean towards academia. But this is a wonderful way of building our community by reaching out to students, um, even, even before college level, to let them know what geography is, but using OpenStreetMap to help people learn about geography and then kind of wrap people into that community in that avenue. So there's so much community engagement going on with these things, charter projects that um, build tools that help make it easy for people to stay involved in these things or, or go to new projects. But I want to emphasize that all of these get built by community members that have a passion and want to build something and, and reach out and get collaborators within our community and put it all together. So it's not all just um, rosy glasses. We, we do have challenges. And so that's been an interesting thing to um, see from the OpenStreetMap board president seat is just people going, wait, what is OpenStreetMap? That is still um, a very strong challenge that we have with interacting with people that maybe use a lot of applications that are based on OpenStreetMap, but they're like, wait, this is OpenStreetMap data, and they have no idea. Um, for example, I was teaching a um, QGIS workshop, actually, to a group called GIS Colorado this past week. And I was asked, oh, so OpenStreetMap data, because I, I was teaching people how to use the quick OSM plugin. And they were like, what? OK, so how, how does OpenStreetMap data get used? And it was kind of one of those, well, everywhere. <laughs> and it was interesting because this was a group of geospatial professionals that still did not know what OpenStreetMap was. And then there's the piece of OSM US is what now? Is that 
we are a very active local chapter um, that Maggie and, and team and everybody that's involved in it is we're doing so much, but people are trying to figure out how to talk to us. And through um, a lot of the work from like Quincy building this amazing website, we have like these really great avenues for communication. So these challenges of trying to just describe what is OpenStreetMap? What is OpenStreetMap US? We're getting um, into a space where those can be discussed a lot more easily. And so it's really glad to have all of you here at this virtual conference to kind of help spread that news and figure out how you can help in that space too. So if you go to our um, website, openstreetmap.us, you'll be able to go on a dropdown that says our work. And I've kind of poked at some of these a little bit, um, mapping for impact, teach OSM, the trail stewardship. We have um, different tools, public domain map that is getting built out. We've taken over field papers. They're all of these collaborative and again, community collaborative projects that we're supporting that I want to make sure people are aware of. And being um, that president is just kind of making sure I know what all of these things are and how they connect. And it's really great to learn more about them. The charter projects, I mentioned open historical map, um, OSM CHA, where we kind of help with validation and, and have this wonderful tool to do that very easily. Map Roulette, being able to kind of fix a lot of interesting projects and, and make it accessible for people to have, you know, kind of a fun time in, in doing edits in a way that just, you know, oh, I just want to hop in and do a little bit of editing instead of sitting down for a full hour session of it. Just amazing projects that we have. So we have great collaborative outcomes in all of this. And I just wanted to peek at a couple of the outcomes from this. Um, the Trails Working Group is something that has morphed into the Trail Stewardship Initiative, but I wanted to emphasize the collaboration in this working group because it's not just OSM mappers. It is land managers from um, federal agencies that have been part of it. And also people that actually work at the navigation apps. And I'll talk more about this in a presentation later today. There is the Americana map style. I have not been involved in this directly myself, but it is amazing to watch this thing grow and have a whole new base map style that kind of works with American road systems and all of this and being able to see that. Swimming pools, kind of on a smaller scale, working with the rising tide effect to make sure that um, all of the swimming pools in New York are mapped so that equitable access for people that are just learning how to swim can get constructed. And then a special one that um, I was able to jump in on called SACUS. The we as as a board member, you see emails that are coming into OpenStreetMap US, and this one came from a research group called the Southeast Conservation Adaption Strategy, and they are building conservation priorities and a model of prioritizing where they should do con conservation. And OpenStreetMap data is one of their base data sets that they're using to do this, but they contacted us because they're like, we don't really understand exactly how to work with all of this and we'd like to work with it better. And so it was wonderful to be able to hop into that space and, and help out with that collaboration as well. So just a quick bounce into visual into all four of those um, collaborative outcomes. And there are so many more. These are just four that I wanted to highlight for people. But this is an example of how rendering in a navigation app called Gaia GPS came about and changed and made our, um, because of the way that we're doing tagging more carefully in trails, 
it makes the trails that land managers really want us to focus on and be on more obvious. We still map what's on the ground, but in these conversations, we were able to help people with safety and environmental sustainability in this. Here is a screenshot of the Americana map style that is implementing all of those um, shields for highways and interstates that just speak a lot more to what the US looks like. So that was a huge collaborative project with a lot of work going into that. And the rising tide effect, if you go um, to our website and you can click on, I, I have a link on here, but you can also go to our work and get involved in those mapping projects to um, find all of the swimming pools in New York City to make sure that th those people have more easy access to it. And then this is a screenshot of that conservation um, adaptation strategy program in the Southeast US. And this is an output of what they call the blueprint of one of their models of where the highest priorities are for being able to do conservation. And a lot of the trails and other kinds of data in OpenStreetMap inform this model to help them understand where to do good conservation. So another great collaborative outcome. So I just want to end with, it's such a great privilege to be on the board and work with this community. And there are so many different ways to be part of that community. So one, if you're really into the back end of things and you want to help develop and build support tools like MapRoulette and OSM Cha. Or, or dive into the details of open historical map. There's so many opportunities there. If research and, and using OSM data and then thinking about how to map better data for that research is your stick, you can do that. Um, teach, join Teach OSM if you are a teacher or want to look about building the workshops off the materials people are building there. That is a great avenue. You can run for the board. We have elections coming up and we are going to have some open seats and we really want to engage all of you into being part of that um, steering of, of the ship that we do and, and just put your input into where you think OSM US can go. And of course, MAP. There's so many different ways to do that. There is your individual mapping projects. You can join projects off the tasking manager, of course, and there are just organized ones on the tasking manager. You can build your own projects and, and get onto the Slack and work with people that have the same kind of passions that you do. So be part of the community. And that that is largely what I have to say about that is it has been a privilege and I'm looking forward to this upcoming year and being available to anyone with questions about all of the things OpenStreetMap is doing. Fantastic, thank you so much, Diane. We have a few minutes before the break, if anybody has any questions, uh, there is a Q&A box down there and we can check those. Um, otherwise, if you have questions throughout the event, feel free to drop those in there and we'll have speakers um, answer you there. So I'll check that Q&A. Uh, there's also going to be polls throughout the event. So um, if you wanna participate in those, we can ask some questions, um, get to know everybody through the polls. Uh, doesn't look like there's any open questions right now, but thanks again, Diane. We're going to go on break. Oh, something just popped in. Uh, that is an open question, by the way. I just see, saw it come in. Uh, what kind of background do you need to be a board member? Diane, do you want to take that? Yeah. Um. So because the, the board has a lot of different tasks where we have a treasurer, a secretary, we are looking for all different kinds of skills. So your 
you don't have to have a very defined skill set. You just to have a passion and bring what you have to contribute to the board. So if you're really good at accounting, that could be something <laughs> useful. If you're really good at fundraising, if you're really good at just thinking about how to make connections between people that do certain kinds of mapping and just have the, this vision for how to wrap them into something. It's not a specific piece. If you are really good at do doing um, tool building, then you can have that kind of perspective for it. We have a very large variety. So I came from academia. And so my piece was just being able to see how does OSM connect well to that education system or research projects? Um, one I didn't mention was working with data science students at the University of um, Virginia. They have a program where we come in and say, hey, we've got this project. It would be great for you to work with OpenStreetMap data and develop your um, capstone project on this data. And so I've been able to make connections with them like that. But there are so many different ways you can contribute to the board. We will be having a session at 450 with the existing board members. So there'll be more time there to talk about it um, and how to become a board member will also be discussed in that session. Um, we can share some links. I see another question about the process. Uh, we are a membership driven organization. So our members vote for our board. Uh, so you have to be a member to run um, and a member to vote. And we can share more information about that later as well. Um, but for now, we're going to take a five minute break and then kick things off at 2.30. Um, so see you back here in five minutes. Thanks again, Diane. 